So this is our first activity and uh, like any other class that we teach, we try to start off very basic and then we move on to something very difficult. Um, the very basic that we're going to do is literally going to be a button that turns on a, one of these lights. We are using the blue button and we are using this green light. You can use whatever green light you want, but make sure it's a green light, okay? Um, when you press the blue button, it's going to go ahead and it's going to turn on this green light. So, seems pretty simple. We already know how to wire all the inputs and outputs. We already know how to power up the PLC. We know how to connect to the PLC. Next comes learning how to program. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna walk you through how the program works a little bit, how the program, like the actual RS logic works, and what you kinda need to do to get started, okay? So we're gonna spend a little bit of time on the whiteboard because that's just the way I like to show things. So what I have up here is gonna be our program for turning a button on with, or turning a light on with a button, all right? It's pretty simple. I hope it does not look scary at all. What you're gonna have is you're gonna have your instruction right here and you're gonna have your output, all right? Now, getting into this conversation, I'm gonna, we're gonna be doing some new terminology. We're gonna, we're gonna be using instructions that are no longer called normally open and normally closed. And we're gonna be changing that to examine if open and examine if closed. Or it's actually, if you were doing it in correct order, to be examine if closed and examine if open. So this one right here is called an XIC which stands for examine if closed, okay? I always remember these because they're the exact opposite as to how they look, all right? So you should be able to determine that based off of being the opposite, all right? So what's gonna happen is when we click our button on the actual trainer, it's going to send a signal to this instruction because it's gonna be coded to that or addressed to this instruction. So remember these I colon zero slash zero, okay? Because remember we hooked our wires up to that I, I zero slash zero. Well, that's indicating this address, all right? So then we're gonna have our input over here. Now our input is gonna be called an OTE. So it's gonna be OTE, all right? Which stands for output energized, all right? It doesn't matter if it's energized or not, it's called Output Energized. I know, these ones have a lot of description in them, while this one's pretty much what you're gonna use for every output there is, except when you get into math instructions and such, that kind of thing, they have their own actual instructions. But anytime you're gonna turn something on that's like discrete, it will probably be this output. I'm pretty confident it's gonna, I to say it's only gonna be this output, okay? And remember, it's going to be addressed as an O colon, zero slash zero because again we hooked the wires up to that address all right now i want to try to start explaining something to you guys about the internal bits there is a bit connected to each one of these inputs and each one of these outputs and they are either a one or they are a zero so right now if this one was a zero let's let's go ahead and we'll just draw that up here it doesn't really have a purpose um it's not gonna be how it is on the program, okay? If we press the button, this zero will become a one. So we'll go ahead and scratch that out and it will become a one. When we let off the, the button, it's gonna take the one away and it's gonna make it a zero, okay? This instruction is based off of whether this is a one or a zero, okay? So when it's a zero, it's gonna be, let's call it open. There's no way for uh, a path of true to happen to our output. And what a path of true would be is if it could go through this instruction and maybe more instructions, who knows, and it will turn our output on, okay? So when this is a zero, it's, it's kind of stop that, that signal, okay? As soon as it becomes a one, there is going to be, there's gonna be some lights that light up on the outside here, and this path will be closed. So that way it can go through to our output. And the reason they call them XIC, so it's examine if closed or examine if open is because the PLC is scanning and it's going through that process. If this becomes closed, it's gonna scan it, it's gonna see that it's closed, and then it's going to complete the path of true and turn on our output, all right? So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and let's jump on my computer and I wanna get programming this, this program, all right? 
All right, so we're going to be starting this tutorial based on you've already wired together all of your inputs and outputs, or you've wired together with the one input and the one output, um, and you've already connected with RS Links. If you have any questions on any of that, please go back and review that information. Please don't waste any time and just you know try to make it happen. Actually, go back and learn how to do it, okay? Because you will do it a lot of times in this class. We're going to go over here to RS Logics because that's what we're going to center this talk really about. We're going to go ahead and open. Open it up. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and start a new program, and then I want to talk a little bit about what's here. Okay, so this window is gonna come up. Remember to select processors. We're gonna be using a Micrologix 1100B series, and you can go ahead and name it whatever you'd like. And I'm just gonna name it Mike. Okay, hit OK. This doesn't really change too much, and doesn't it's not that big a deal. And you can always rename it. Okay, so. Little quick to you know tour of the RS logics. And I talked a little bit about it, but it was so quick and it was so fast. I'd like to spend some time here. The first area I want to point out is this right here, this box. Okay, I don't know if I can. Let me see if I can grab it. Yeah, I kind of move around this box right here. This box has all of our instructions in it, and you can go ahead and you can click and drag, or you can click and it'll actually go to a certain area. And I'm, I'm going to show you that here in a second. Um, this is going to have all of our instruction styles. There's multiple tabs here, so you can actually hit these arrows. Let's see if it hits the arrows. Oh, sorry, these arrows down here, and actually it will go through multiple tabs, okay? And then you can go all the way back to the beginning. The first, uh, probably the next, this whole module, or the, this module and probably the next one are going to center around this page. And then once we get into timers and counters and stuff like that, we're going to get into those other pages, okay? Um, the next thing is this, you know, set of this little box here. I don't know if I can grab it. It's not letting me. Oh yeah, this box right here. It's all of your like go online, your download, your go, you know, go offline, upload stuff. It's all going to be right here. It's going to kind of tell you any information that you're going to have about connecting to the PLC and such. Um, obviously, we have up here our main toolbar with all of our kind of main stuff that we're going to get. Our tools, going get our comms are right here so we can go system comms. Um, you can also go online, upload and download from here. It's all in how you like to do it. Um, right here if you wanted to save, new, things like that. These are This is a pretty common toolbar. I don't want to get too much into this. Um, and then again, we have our, our our new, our open, our save, all of these right here. The one, these down here are gonna be our verify and verify files. I'll try to show you those um, when we actually get the, the project built. Down here on our left side, there's, there's a lot of stuff in here, so I'm not gonna talk about everything, but one thing I wanna point out is gonna be our program files. Um, these are these first two are the actual files that are running behind the scenes um, that makes the PLC work. We can't really look at those. I don't even think you can click on them yet. Nothing happens if you click on them. Um, this is the one we're actually working on, this ladder two. Um, if you want to have more subroutines and such, you just hit the, you click, oops, sorry. Let me open that again. You hit the right button, and it'll say new, and you can click yes, and it'll let you add another subroutine okay see now there's number three there and you can obviously at that point name them if you'd like um, these are our data files we're going to talk a little bit about that coming up but don't worry about it too much in this lab so let's go ahead and let's actually spend some time programming now so the first thing that's important and I'm going to click over here is when you want to start putting your program into place you need to come over to the rung and click and it's going to turn red oops double clicked it on accident um, it's going to turn red okay if you'd like to click and drag like we had talked about you can come up here to um, the exam if closed or you can come up here to whatever instruction you may be looking for you can click it and you can actually drag it down to one of these red boxes you could come over here and actually drop it here but you always want to make sure your inputs are on the left side and your outputs are on the right side so you can just drop now I want to show you this if I'm clicked onto this this rung and I just click the examine if close, see it just jumps right to where I was. This works out really nicely when you're laying on a brand new um, program. Not very nicely if you have a very big program and you're trying to add or fix it, okay? So let's grab our, uh, our output. Remember these are, and if you hover over them, they'll actually say what they are. Oops. 
what the heck? Oops, let me undo this. So we have an undo button too. So we have our examine if closed, and we also have our output energized. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I want to code these. So I just click, and I don't know if you've seen that. I probably did it pretty fast. I'm just going to click up here at the very top where that question mark is, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type I colon zero slash zero. Okay. Make sure that these are not O's. Make sure that they are zeros. Okay. And now this little window is going to pop up and it's just asking you to name your device or your this instruction. So we're going to go ahead and just call it button. And these are the instructions I'd like you to use um, in this program. They always are going to need to be titled. All right. So this is a completed um, instruction, like it's ready to go. If this little zero right here does not exist on your instruction, you've done something wrong. More than likely, you've you know didn't do a semicolon. You may have used a letter instead of a zero or something like that. Okay. This also indicates which um, which terminal you might be using as of the input. So just know that that there has to be a number there. Okay. Um, we're going to go to our output energized, click on it. We're going to do an O colon zero slash zero, enter. And this one's just going to be a light. So we're just going to go ahead and label it light. All right. Now, when you go ahead and you actually download to the PLC, it will verify your, your program. But you can also hit this verify project button, and it will compile it, and it will verify it. So if you were, by chance, you, let's say you hadn't put this input right here, or I'm sorry, that output right there, and you hit the verify project, it's going to come up here and it's going to show an error. It's going to show it's a, a file or a program file. If you click it down, it's going to say on rung zero, error output missing on rung, okay? That one's pretty easy. Usually they're a little bit more difficult to find. Hopefully they're all that easy for you. And you can come back and we can just put this back into place and we can do O colon zero slash zero, enter. And you notice I already put the the tag in for this one, so it immediately just put light there. So that's kind of cool. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of that. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can actually download. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click this, this arrow down. Oops, let me click that again. I'm going to go to download and then we're going to walk through some questions. So if you like, we can do Mike's lab. Lab. Let's, let's change it all to lowercase. Mike's lab. This is 2-6, I think. 2-6, okay? It's really nice if you actually label all this stuff so when you go back and find it, it just makes your life easier. Go ahead and save. And now you're going to start being asked these questions. Now, this first question is really asking if you'd like to take this program that you're working on, this Mike's program, and you're, you want to put it into this, this one right here, or this PLC, okay? I'm going to say yes. This is very important if there is multiple PLCs to make sure that you are putting it into the right PLC. Okay, hit the yes button. Processor is going to going to change to remote remote run. Um, processor must be switched to remote program mode. Continue. Um, this is really just letting you know because ultimately you don't want to put download a program while something's running. So if you have a conveyor belt and it's running a thousand parts off a second and you go and download something new, there's going to be a little bit of a hiccup and things are going to stop running, okay? So you want to make it's kind of trying to make sure you don't do something that could damage the pro, the process or it could actually create big mess or problems, okay? So it's making sure you want to say yes again. And then it's going to actually be downloading imager or process imager. And it's going to change back to run mode, which we want to do. And it's going to say, do you want to go online? You want to say yes. And we are online with our program that has newly downloaded. Now, this is a very good part of programming is I want to show you a little bit. This kind of helps for troubleshooting and also for understanding how the program works. When I press this button right here, I want you to watch in the program what's going to happen. It's going to become green. Okay, notice these green bars right here and right here. Anytime there is energy, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know why it clicked. Anytime there is, gosh, come on, get away from that. Get away from there. Anytime there is um, 
uh, an input is turned on, it's going to be green like this. Notice our output is also green next to it, so I know that that light is turned on right now. This becomes very important if you're troubleshooting. You can come up to your, you know, your screen, and you're, you know, it's running live. You can go ahead and look and see if a uh, sensor or a button is being energized. If it's not being energized, maybe you then at that point can trace the wires and actually do some testing to figure out if the button's bad or if the wire got cut or something like that. So that would be the the troubleshooting side of this. Okay. So that is our first program. It literally works one button, turns on a light, and that should be it. If you guys got any questions or need any help with this one, please let me know. Um, I talked a lot about a lot of different things, so hopefully I didn't kind of go too far. So please let me know if I can help or if I was a little bit confusing, there's something we need to go over, okay? So good luck, go ahead and build this lab, submit it. Um, make sure that you label all of your instructions, make sure that you save an RSS file because we're going to put into the next activity, we're actually going to download that RSS file and turn it in, okay? So good luck.